We all know that the Model Y has been Tesla's most successful car for the mass market up until now, and as of the latest update, in the second quarter of 2024, Tesla has absolutely crushed it by delivering around 444,000 vehicles, with 95% of those being Model Y and Model 3. Now, Tesla is gearing up to blow our minds with the upgraded Model Y Juniper, promising some seriously exciting improvements. So, without further ado, let's dive into all the juicy details we have so far about this new model. Before we begin, it's worth noting that this is a compilation video covering all confirmed, potential and rumoured updates for the Juniper model. Some of the information you may have already heard before, but we've gathered it all here for a comprehensive overview. Exterior and Interior Redesign According to Inside EV, one of the main changes expected in the Model Y Juniper is an exterior redesign. The media outlet anticipates that Tesla will give the revised Model Y a similar exterior makeover to the refreshed Model 3, featuring a completely new face with slimmer, more modern-looking headlights that replace the upturned nose. The rear lights and bumper are also expected to be updated to match the Model 3 Highland, giving the Juniper a more aggressive bumper akin to the new Model 3 performance. And do not let us disappoint, these predictions have turned out to be true. Recently, a leaked image of the Model Y Juniper has spread like wildfire on Reddit. A user named Jack I Jack posted the image, claiming he spotted a masked Model Y while running around the Rose Bowl in California. According to him, the front of this car had the same shape as the Model 3 Highland. He also mentioned that the last time someone saw a masked Highland was about six to seven months before its official release, leading him to believe that the Model Y Juniper might follow the same pattern and hit the market soon. Next up is some change that comes to the wheel. Tesla has a history of revising wheel designs with each model refresh, and the Model Y Juniper is surely to follow this trend. While the wheel sizes will remain the same, improvements in the wheel's appearance and aero performance are anticipated. For instance, the refreshed Model 3 saw a reduction in its drag coefficient from 0.23 to 0.219, and it is probable that the Juniper will benefit from similar advancements. Right now, all Model Y trims have a drag coefficient of 0.23 but the car can feel bulky, with even the performance trims taking 3.5 seconds to accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour, with rollout subtracted. In contrast, the 2024 Model 3 performance can achieve the same feat in only 2.9 seconds. So it will be exciting to see Tesla's efforts to improve the ride quality of the Model Y. The numbers on paper are about 510 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds, and a top speed of 163 miles an hour. Now, let's move on to the interior. Tesla has already equipped Model Ys manufactured in China with the same RGB ambient lighting found in the updated Model 3. The wood trim on the dashboard has been replaced with the same textile material used in the sedan. With the Juniper update, these changes will be complemented by a redesigned center console. A center console part, believed to belong to the Model Y Juniper, has been leaked. According to the leaker, it is a refreshed Model Y accessory image leaked from Tesla's supplier in China. As you can see, the interior design strongly resembles that of the Model 3 Highland Edition, especially noticeable in the hidden cup holder compartments with sliding drawers. However, there are some new touches, like the chrome border around the wireless charging pad, which differs slightly from the wireless charger in the Model 3. Another interesting aspect of the Model Y Juniper is the incorporation of state-of-the-art features from the Model 3 Highland, such as ventilated seats and a rear screen. These small details make a big difference in the driving experience and demonstrate Tesla's commitment to user comfort and convenience. So it will be such a pity if Model Y Juniper does not have it. But here comes the biggest change to the Juniper. The completely new steering wheel, borrowed from the Highland. Just like in the Model 3, Tesla will eliminate the stalks behind the steering wheel and relocate more functions to the steering wheel itself. Retaining physical controls for turn signals, lights, wipers and the voice assistant. Better ride quality Beyond the visuals, the ride quality of the Model Y Juniper is expected to see significant improvements. The updated Model 3 saw a dramatic enhancement in ride comfort due to a completely revised suspension system. 
This transformed it into a much more comfortable car, considering that the current Model Y can feel quite stiff and sometimes unpleasant on less than ideal roads, we anticipate it will also receive a softened suspension with more emphasis on cushioning occupants and isolating them from road imperfections. To get a better understanding of the old Model Y's ride quality, let's take a look at Jeebs's opinion on the matter. Tesla Model Y long range certainly rides stiffer than it should. The performance model should ride stiff. Its performance model has larger wheels, has stiffer springs. That's expected to ride stiffer. Another thing Tesla has done to improve the ride quality of Model Y Juniper, as well as other future Tesla cars, is the incorporation of more advanced full self-driving hardware. Soon this year, Tesla is upgrading its Model Y in China. Equipped this car model with Hardware 4, which offers several advancements over the current units. One of the key improvements in Hardware 4 is its streamlined design. The infotainment GPU is now integrated on the same board as the FSD chips, eliminating the daughter board used in Hardware 3. This redesign makes the entire unit thinner and more efficient. Hardware 4 continues to use 256GB of NVMe storage, 16GB of RAM, and the same AMD CPU and GPU as its predecessor. The FSD computer in Hardware 4 also brings some changes to the sensor suite. It includes 12 camera connectors, with one labelled as Spare. The new setup features 11 cameras, including a cabin camera humorously named Selfie. The markings indicate that the cars will have three additional cameras in the front, providing a more comprehensive view of the vehicle's surroundings. Additionally, Hardware 4 includes a tri-band GPS module, which offers more accurate positioning in densely built areas. It also features the previously rumoured Phoenix radar, complete with a radar heater. These two additions to the sensor package represent the most significant differences compared to Hardware 3. However, despite the many new features, Hardware 4 didn't prove to be as revolutionary as people had hoped, prompting Tesla to develop a brand new hardware platform. One issue was that the HD radar included in Hardware 4 was never actually used by Tesla. Another significant problem was the lack of processing power to handle the much larger datasets. Although Hardware 4 includes higher resolution cameras, approximately four to five times better in terms of resolution and fidelity than those in Hardware 3, and is about three to some five times faster and more powerful in inference capabilities, Tesla chose to downsize the images to run on the same neural network models designed for Hardware 3. Currently, Hardware 4 operates in emulation mode for Hardware 3. As a result, Hardware 4 is very similar to Hardware 3 in practical terms. This similarity explains why Elon Musk and Tesla have decided to start from scratch with Hardware 5. Hardware 3, so, but, but everything you're seeing thus far is just Hardware 3, and we still have a long way to go before we, get, we reach the limits of Hardware 3. So Hardware 3, I think, will, will still will do amazing things, but, but Hardware 4, I think, will probably do uh, f about five times better. Um, then Hardware 5, which comes out in about 18 months or so, is 10 times more capable than Hardware 4. So, with the new hardware set to arrive in 18 months, and the massive amount of driver data processed through an end-to-end -end neural network, achieving real full self-driving seems just a matter of time for Tesla. This capability will be a major selling point for the Model Y Juniper and other Tesla cars in the near future. Even Elon Musk has acknowledged that Tesla still needs time to fully understand the capabilities of their FSD system. In fact, we're, not even, we're still exploring the boundaries of its capabilities. Uh, we're able to run the cameras at full frame rate, full resolution, uh, not even crop the images, and uh, it's still got headroom even on one of the, the systems. Elon Musk has been actively promoting the mass adoption of the FSD system. A notable event this year was Musk's visit to China, where he met with high-ranking government officials to discuss the deployment of Tesla's full self-driving software and seek permission to transfer data overseas. This data transfer is crucial for training algorithms that will further enhance Tesla's autonomous driving technology. Fortunately, they secured a deal. Tesla even struck a partnership with Baidu for navigation maps in China. According to a report from Shanghai Securities News, a Baidu executive mentioned that the company is looking to utilize Tesla's upcoming robo-taxi, which promises to offer level 5 autonomous driving.
battery change. Now let's talk about one of the most exciting parts, the battery. There have been many rumours about the best battery for the Model Y Juniper, but at the end of the day, only two battery types have the best chance of being integrated into the Model Y Juniper. First is KATL's new Shenxing Plus battery, which we've discussed many times on this channel. This battery boasts an energy density of 205 watt-hour per kilogram, and can provide a real-world range of over 1,000 kilometers or 621 miles. It also supports ultra-fast charging, offering a 600-kilometer range in just 10 minutes of charge. Even in low temperatures, it takes only 30 minutes, matching the charging speed of most current EVs. In addition to its performance, the competitive pricing of the Shenxing Plus battery is a decisive factor. As the world's largest producer of EV batteries, KTL has announced plans to slash the cost of its batteries by up to 50% this year as part of a price war with China's second largest maker, BYD subsidiary Fin Dreams. This significant reduction in battery costs could make EVs using KTL sourced batteries much cheaper. This is great news, as batteries currently account for about 28% of an EV's price on average, according to Statista. The second option for the Model Y Juniper is Tesla's self-developed 4680 battery. I recently made a video covering every update about this 4680 battery, so be sure to check that out. Here's a quick summary. The 4680 Gen 2 features changes in both the cathode and anode, relying on NCMA, nickel cobalt manganese aluminum chemistry, and this can increase the stability as well as lifespan and energy density of the cells. In addition to the NCMA chemistry, Tesla is reportedly working to incorporate an NMC 955 cathode chemistry into their 40C80 batteries, replacing the current NMC 811 cathode chemistry. Tesla is also experimenting with asymmetric lamination, where one side of the material is thicker than the other. This innovative approach aims to increase the capacity of the battery jelly roll that fits into the 4680 can, potentially leading to higher energy density and improved overall battery performance. And that doesn't mark the end of today's video because recently, Tesla just launched a massive new update for the Model Y, introducing five amazing new features you have to try right now. Even if you think you know all the Tesla secrets, I guarantee you'll learn at least one or two new things in this video. It's also worth noting that some of these features might make their way to the 2025 Model Y as well. Now, you can check your cabin filter health. Alright? This very first hidden feature is about to solve a huge problem for many of you watching this video, helping you fix an issue if your Tesla stinks. If your Model Y, or any Tesla model, is newly bought this year, you probably won't encounter this problem. However, if your car is a few years old and starts to smell, especially with the AC system on, it's most likely an issue with the cabin air filter. With one of the latest updates, you now have the ability to check the health of your cabin air filter and see if it needs to be replaced. Here's how to check it out. First step, you need to tap on the car icon on the main menu to jump into software. Next up, under the software tab, tap and hold on the name of your vehicle until a dialog box appears. Type service in the box, then go to thermal, then HVAC. You'll see several views, the top mode by default, a left view, and a right view. Look carefully in the right view tab, you will see the status of your cabin air filter. Tesla typically recommends replacing the cabin air filter every two years, but if your car starts to smell, check the filter's health here. If it's on the lower side, that might be the cause of the odour. So, do you think this new feature from Tesla's update is useful for you? Comment 1 if you think it is, and 2 if you think it is just an unnecessary feature. I'm excited to hear out your opinion, so comment it down below. New trick to restore Disney Plus. Now, this next sort of new hidden feature might be something that Tesla doesn't want you to know, but I know Tesla owners will appreciate it. If you go into your Tesla theater, you might notice that Disney Plus is no longer available, which is a bit odd. The likely reason is a disagreement between Elon Musk and Disney CEO Bob Iger. However, if you want to bring Disney Plus back, 
All you need to do is go to the browser and follow these simple steps, as pointed out by Robert Rosenfeld. So we go to the correct URL, which is DisneyPlus.com, and then it loads us into this full screen a sort of Tesla theater-esque interface, which seems odd. Now, if we, you know, stay in here, we can watch our content, do our thing, bada boom, bada bing, works as usual. But now if we exit this, we close it, it's now back in Tesla theater. A bunch of latest update to the core. Many people refer to Tesla cars as iPads on wheels. And there's some truth to that since nearly every function relies on the touchscreen in the middle of the car. With the recent update, Tesla has introduced a bunch of new features for the Model Y, as well as other models like the 3, S and X. First, Tesla is known for its array of useful media streaming apps like Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, Sirius XM, TuneIn and Audible. Now, they've added two more apps to the list, YouTube Music and Amazon Music. Both of these apps require premium connectivity or an active Wi-Fi connection. Additionally, Tesla has upgraded its parental controls. You can now enable parental controls with a pin on your vehicle. This allows you to set a maximum speed limit, limit acceleration to chill mode, and turn on safety features such as speed limit warning, automatic emergency braking, and forward collision warning. You can also configure a night curfew to receive notifications through your Tesla mobile app when the vehicle is driven past curfew. Another useful feature in the update is the ability to schedule charging and preconditioning. You can select a location, schedule one-off or repeat specific times or days of the week and control when charging starts and stops. To schedule your charge and precondition, just tap controls and then schedule. The update also includes a new feature for navigation. When you enter a navigation destination, you can now select a sub-destination such as a specific terminal at the airport to get more accurate routing details. Lastly, the update includes weather forecast and air quality information. Your vehicle status bar now shows local weather conditions alongside the temperature. When air quality is poor, your vehicle will display an AQI, air quality index symbol and index value. Additionally, you can tap the temperature on your touchscreen to see details about your local weather forecast, such as weather conditions, highs and lows of the day, and the chance of rain. UI Upgrade One of Tesla's latest updates introduced a significant UI change to Model Y that we can temporarily call Cybertruck View, since this feature first came to Cybertruck. Thanks to this new full-screen parking mode, it offers you easy access to different parts of your car. While you can swipe it away to return to the normal park mode, this view is a major improvement. Basically, this new UI provides a high-definition 3D view of your vehicle, allowing you to zoom and navigate around it. You can easily access various controls. For example, to open the frunk, simply tap on it and hit open. The same goes for the trunk, with real-time animations showing the changes. Just tap on that, hit open, and that's all. It's important to note that this feature only works if your Tesla is equipped with an AMD Ryzen chip. To check if your Tesla supports this, go to the car menu at the bottom left of the screen, navigate to software, then tap on Additional Vehicle Information. Look for Infotainment Processor and ensure it says AMD Ryzen Processor. This chip is included in all Teslas built after January 2022. Looking ahead, Tesla is developing its own chips, with plans for about half of the AI hardware to be Tesla's own, and the other half from NVIDIA and other suppliers. These chips will be part of their latest hardware, HW5 or AI5, which Elon Musk said all Tesla cars will have within the next 18 months. I will keep an eye on these exciting developments and deliver the latest information to you as soon as we get it, so stay tuned. Switching from hardware 5 to AI5, will be in Optimus and in, in all cars in, in about 18 months. Um, and it's really just a, a staggering amount of compute. And it's very, it's very power efficient compute. Auto Park is improved. Another feature that has seen significant improvements recently is Auto Park. Though it was introduced a few months ago and wasn't functioning properly at that time, it now has become much faster and more confident in its operations. 
One surprising aspect is that the typical sounds the car makes when it's getting close to other objects have been completely removed while Autopark is active. The system remains silent, except for the sounds it makes when shifting gears. This was likely done to prevent alarming the occupants, as Autopark sometimes needs to get extremely close to other cars and objects, and continuous warning sounds would make the experience more stressful. Another impressive improvement is Autopark's ability to recognise and adapt to parking spaces even in brand new parking lots without marked lines. The system still shows selectable parking spots on the visualisations, spacing them out according to how many cars can fit, even without lines for guidance. This feature is quite effective and works most of the time. Another area where the updated Autopark feature differs from its older version is that it no longer needs two cars to parallel park between. It can now park in front of or behind a single car, as you can see it doing right now. Interestingly, it still behaves as if it's fitting between two cars, taking what I consider the more difficult approach. Instead of just pulling up to the curb and reversing, it backs towards the curb at a big angle as if trying to avoid a ghost car parked there. Hopefully this is something Tesla can improve in future updates. These are just some of the updates to Tesla's Auto Park feature. While it's a good update, there are still areas that need improvement. Here's what YouTube channel AI Driver had to say about the performance of Auto Park. Overall, I gotta say, I've been very impressed with this new version of Auto Park. It is a bit slow right now, and I probably won't be using it for basic parking situations until it's a little faster, but for more difficult spaces and parallel parking, it does a fantastic job. Most of the time, it parks straighter and closer to the curb than any of the other cars around, even in some more challenging situations. Is true self-driving near? According to the South China Morning Post, Tesla's cars can now be purchased by Chinese government departments, marking a significant milestone for the company. The Model Y, Tesla's best-selling vehicle, appeared on a procurement list for new energy vehicles, NEVs, for 2024 and 2025 on the Jiangsu province's government website. What's special about this news? Previously, Tesla's vehicles were banned from use by government agencies, state-owned enterprises and military sites due to data security concerns. Now, Tesla has become the first foreign car maker to win approval from Chinese data security regulators. This follows a meeting between Elon Musk and Chinese Premier Li Qiang in Beijing in April to promote the mass adoption of full self-driving FSD technology. Tesla can now utilize their fleet equipped with the FSD system in China and transfer the driving data back to the US for further training. Despite currently operating at level 2 autonomy, Tesla's self-driving system is highly regarded for its advanced features and benefits to customers. These include of navigating interchanges, automatic lane changes on highways, adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assistance. In addition, Tesla provides Summon and Smart Summon, which may be used to navigate parking lots and retrieve remote parking, as well as to detect and react to stop signs and traffic lights on metropolitan streets. When compared to Tesla's self-driving technology, Mercedes-Benz's Level 3 Drive Pilot system is frequently thought to be less practical and less functional for drivers. So the operating conditions that need to be in place for Drive Pilot to activate, it only works at speeds 40 miles an hour and under. It only works with a vehicle in front of you. It only works when the lane lines are clearly marked, either with dots or with lane markers. And it also only works in good weather. And it also doesn't work at night. So this is, again, only a daytime system and really only meant to work in traffic. Tesla consistently rolls out updates quickly, and that's something we, as customers, greatly appreciate. So. What are your thoughts on all of this? Which feature would you like to see again on the Model Y Juniper? Is there any update or feature worth mentioning that we might have overlooked? Drop a comment down below and let me know. For now, you know nearly everything about the Model Y Juniper, its exterior, interior and features. In the next part, let's delve into the true price of owning a Juniper model. With so many updates, will it be much more expensive than its predecessor? Follow along as we answer that right away. What is the base price for the Model Y Juniper? If Tesla follows the same pattern with the Model Y as it did with the Model 3 refresh, the price of the new Model Y Juniper will remain the same as the current version, 
despite receiving numerous updates to the exterior, interior and features. However, this is just the best case scenario, because, in reality, many factors can affect the price of the Juniper model. The first factor is inflation. Although it has decreased compared to 2024, the inflation rate is still projected to be 2.1% in 2025. With the current price of the Model Y being nearly $45,000 before the $7,500 federal tax credit and $6,000 in gas savings over five years, you would need to pay approximately $945 more for the Model Y Juniper in 2025 due to this inflation rate. The second factor that can affect the price of the Model Y Juniper is the cost of batteries. Goldman Sachs Research has revised its expectations, forecasting a drop in battery prices to 99 dollars per kilowatt hour of storage capacity by 2025. A 40% decrease from 2022, previously predicted at 33%. Analysts anticipate that nearly half of this decline will come from lower prices of EV raw materials like lithium, nickel and cobalt. Battery pack prices are now projected to decrease by an average of 11% per year from 2023 to 2030, according to Nikhil Bhandari, co-head of Goldman Sachs Research's Asia-Pacific Natural Resources and Clean Energy Research. While it's unclear exactly how much the new battery of the Model Y Juniper will save on the cost of the car, this declining trend in battery prices could potentially reduce the cost by around $5,000. However, there's an important consideration regarding the battery. Starting this year, new regulations restrict the inclusion of Chinese content in batteries if they are to qualify for EV tax credits of up to $7,500. From 2025, a qualifying clean vehicle cannot contain critical minerals from businesses controlled by a foreign entity of concern, such as China, Russia or North Korea. Given that the Model Y Juniper is likely to feature the Shenxing Plus battery from China, it risks losing eligibility for the EV tax credit. However, Tesla has a solution for this. They are building a new battery plant in Nevada with equipment from Chinese battery giant CATL. The new report notes that CATL will not be involved in production, most likely to avoid criticism regarding the involvement of a Chinese company in US production. This strategy should help Tesla maintain eligibility for the tax credits. Now, let's delve deeper into the EV federal tax credit. There are three key requirements for a new EV to be eligible for this credit. Firstly, the price cap. Vans, SUVs and pickup trucks must have an MSRP, or Manufacturer's Suggested Retail Price, of $80,000 or less to qualify. Sedans and passenger cars are capped at $55,000. For used vehicles, the price cap drops to $25,000. Along with price caps on cars, the EV tax credit also sets limits on the modified adjusted gross income that taxpayers can make in order to qualify. And the final factor. To be eligible for the credit, vehicles must have their final assembly in North America. The Model Y Juniper is expected to meet all three requirements, especially the final assembly requirement. Thanks to Tesla's vertical integration approach, which results in the automaker making a lot of its parts itself in North America, Tesla consistently ranks among the automakers making the most American-made vehicles. In conclusion, under the impact of inflation and the decrease in battery prices, you will need to pay approximately $41,000 to own a Model Y Juniper. This model is also eligible for the federal tax credit and some states may offer additional incentives so you can expect the price to drop even further. However, this estimate only covers the base price of the car. There are several extra costs associated with the purchase that you also need to be aware of. Let's discuss those in the next part. Every extra cost you need to know. First, let's talk about vehicle registration costs. These fees can vary depending on the state you live in, but on average, they can be around $750. To get a more precise estimate, you can use the calculator available on the DMV website, which allows you to input your details and figure out the exact registration cost beforehand. Additionally, don't forget about the electric vehicle fees, which can go up to $370 depending on your state. These fees are implemented to make up for the gas tax that electric vehicle owners don't pay. 
Let's move on to another huge car expense that you have to pay every year. Insurance. Costs can vary depending on your chosen company and what type of insurance plan you have. Here's a table for reference. Although this data is outdated, insurance premiums typically increase over time. Here's an example from my experience. When I first bought my Model Y, I had AAA insurance and paid about $2,500 annually. The following year, it jumped to $3,100, despite no accidents or major mileage changes. I asked my AAA agent, and according to him, Tesla Model Y were reclassified as luxury vehicles, prompting the increase. Certainly, Tesla also offers their own insurance, which I've heard is competitively priced. However, they determine premiums based on your driving score, meaning they monitor your driving behavior. A lower score results in higher premiums, so I wouldn't recommend using it. Let's discuss maintenance costs now. Since the Model Y and the future Model Juniper are fully electric vehicles, they don't require oil changes or timing belt replacements. Also, it's much less likely that you're going to have to change your brake pads that often because Tesla uses something called regenerative braking, where they use the battery to slow down the car instead of the brakes, and so your brakes just don't wear down as fast as the internal combustion engine car. However, Teslas are heavier due to the high voltage battery, which can cause tires to wear out more quickly. Annual tire replacement costs can amount to around $1,000. Fortunately, common issues such as a failed high voltage battery, autopilot malfunctions, or anomalies with blind spot cameras are covered under warranty, so there's no need to worry about these potential expenses. Moving on to accessories. When you first receive your Tesla from the dealership, it's quite basic. There are some accessories that you'll likely want to consider purchasing. While these are optional, they're generally a good idea to have. Firstly, let's talk about floor mats. Teslas come with carpet floor mats, but if you're anything like me, you'll probably want to invest in some additional floor mats to protect against spills or dirt on your shoes. I recommend opting for 3D Max Pida floor mats, which you can find for around $200 on Amazon. Another accessory that you're probably going to want to get is a mobile charging cable. While these used to come standard with Teslas, they are no longer included. This cable allows you to charge your Tesla using a standard outlet or a NEMA 1450 outlet. You can purchase this cable on the Tesla website for $250. Also, if you prefer faster charging at home, you might also consider installing a Tesla wall connector available for $450 on the Tesla website. There are many more Tesla accessories available, but these are the bare bone accessories that most new Tesla owners typically consider purchasing. Now that you have your nice Tesla, you might want to consider protecting it from rock chips and also from any Tesla haters who might key your car. One option is to apply paint protection film, PPF, to the entire car, which typically costs between $5,000 to $6,000. Additionally, if your Tesla Model Y has a panoramic glass roof, you might want to consider window tinting. This can help reduce heat inside the car on sunny days. The cost for window tinting can range from $600 to $900, depending on the specifics of the tint and the installer. Another optional cost to consider is Tesla's premium connectivity, priced at $9.99 per month or $99 for an entire year, with a free trial available for the first year. While not essential, it offers several useful perks and features. For instance, you can access live traffic updates and view live camera feeds from your parked car which is particularly handy if you have pets or are on a long trip and want to monitor your Tesla remotely via your phone. Additionally, you can enjoy entertainment options such as Netflix, YouTube and music streaming directly from your Tesla. An important feature that many Tesla drivers are using now is full self-driving. Tesla has been working to enhance this technology and make it more accessible by reducing the price of the monthly full self-driving subscription from $199 to $99. However, it's crucial to note that this technology currently achieves only level two autonomy, which still requires you to keep your eyes on the road and be ready to take over at any time. Therefore, I don't recommend paying money for this for now. 
The final cost to consider is charging, although it's not unexpected. Charging at home, especially during off-peak hours, is generally cheaper than fueling with gas. However, since you're no longer spending money on gasoline, your electricity bill will increase accordingly. Charging at a Tesla supercharger varies in cost, but typically averages around 0.25 per kilowatt hour, which is about 50% more expensive than charging at home on average. To charge enough for 250 miles, it may cost around $22 at a supercharger, still considerably less than the cost of gasoline for the same distance. I hope this provided you with a clear understanding of what to expect financially when Tesla releases the Model Y Juniper to the market. However, one question remains unanswered. Where and when will production of the Model Y Juniper take place? Let's now talk about that. The production plan Tesla just upgraded the Model 3 with a lot of new features and manufacturing changes to make it cheaper to make. The same is expected soon for the Model Y, but maybe Tesla is now working on taking this one step further, adding in next-gen platform changes. However, according to some reports, Tesla might postpone the release of the refreshed Model Y in the United States until 2025. Sawyer has expressed an opinion on the matter, noting Elon said more affordable models that utilize aspects of the next-gen platform could launch late 2024 or early 2025. To me, this will start with the refreshed Model Y. This will enable Tesla to reduce the cost of building that vehicle, enabling better affordability. Based on his insight, Tesla is expected to prioritize the production of the Model Y Juniper before the $25,000 Model 2 Redwood. I think the opposite, but it doesn't matter, because we know Tesla is committed to producing and bringing both cars to market as quickly as possible. There is a strong likelihood that Model Y Juniper manufacturing will commence in China, potentially at the same location where Tesla initially produced the refreshed Model 3. Recently, Elon Musk made an unannounced visit to Beijing, where he is expected to meet senior officials, including the country's premier, Li Qiang. The purpose of this visit is to discuss the rollout of Tesla's full self-driving software and seek permission to transfer data overseas. Of course, those are official details that we're aware of. However, it's highly likely that this visit also aims to accelerate the production of the refreshed Model Y. Given that Geiger Shanghai is Tesla's largest factory and has played a significant role in Model 3 and Model Y production, it makes perfect sense to leverage its existing manufacturing capabilities for the Model Y Juniper. This factory operates an impressive 95% automated production line with a cycle time of less than 40 seconds. After taking 2.5 years to produce the first million cars, Giga Shanghai achieved the second million in just 12 months. By manufacturing the Model Y Juniper here, Tesla can produce this model as quickly as possible, undoubtedly contributing significantly towards Musk's target of producing 3 million vehicles per year, as mentioned in the Q1 earnings call. That wraps up today's discussion about the Model Y Juniper. So, are all these updates enough to make you consider swapping your old car for the Tesla Model Y Juniper? Feel free to leave a comment below. If you enjoy today's episode, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. For now, goodbye and see you soon.